the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Board of Investment Trade Unions opposed the Economic Transformation Bill, stating that it will plunge the investment sector into a severe crisis. Employees at risk of losing their jobs at the only oil refinery plant in the country following a transformation. With the Colombo Stock Exchange beginning the week on a negative trajectory, what can we expect for the remainder of the week? And the leaders of South Korea and United Kingdom call for global standards associating with artificial intelligence. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The All Union Alliance of the Board of Investment of Sri Lanka warned yesterday that the proposed Economic Transformation Act to be submitted to the Parliament on the 22nd of May will plunge the investment sector into a severe crisis. In a statement, the coalition warned that implementing this act, which caters to the interest of few individuals without consulting experts or investors in the field, will create a perilous situation where investors who have remained despite the economic crisis will choose to leave the country. Therefore, it is emphasized that the act should be revised transparently, involving directly affected parties as well as economic and investment experts. Though it is claimed that this act will bring about significant economic transformation, it is evident that the real purpose is to secure financial benefits by transferring the 15 profitable and well-operating investment zones under the BOI to their associates before the elections. The danger of this act lies in the immediate repeal of Sri Lankan Board of Investment Act No. 4 of 1978 once it is tabled in the parliament. This will severely impact the operations of both foreign and domestic companies currently governed by the Board of Investment Act. Treasury Secretary Mahinda Sirivardhana said that a bill for Sri Lanka's proposed public financial management law has set a 13% primary spending limit as part of the efforts to improve fiscal discipline in the future. The Public Finance Bill will be a landmark piece of legislation that will provide the guidance and framework to go forward, he told in a seminar organized by the Advocata Institute, a Colombo-based think tank. A Fiscal Management Responsibility Act, which has been repeatedly breached in the past, will be repealed. Sirivardhana said this new law makes it less easy for future administrations to overspend. The law, which sets a 13% of gross domestic product spending limit, allows for a 2% budget reserve according to the draft bill. The 13% spending limit can be exceeded if there is unanticipated events or natural disaster posing significant threats to the national security, national economic security or the public health and safety of the country which necessitate additional temporary and targeted public expenditure beyond any contingencies including the annual budget. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce calls on all political parties to support the continuity of state-owned enterprise reforms and the reforms' momentum, building on the economic stability achieved. The Chamber stresses that it is vital to prioritize and implement the reforms related to state-owned enterprises, energy and fiscal management to ensure that the country does not revert to a crisis. It is crucial that all political parties focus on Sri Lanka's long-term sustainability sustainability and avoid leveraging the reform process for short-term election gains. SOE reforms will enhance the government's fiscal outlook through better performance, productivity and accountability, they said. The chamber calls on all political parties to constructively support these vital initiatives. More than 650 employees at the Sapukaskanda refinery, the country's sole oil refinery, face potential job losses due to its transformation into a separate public enterprise. According to sources, the government plans to retain only approximately 200 of the current employees for the new enterprise. The remaining workers will be placed in a pool from which the new enterprise will select necessary personnel to maintain operations. In March, the cabinet ministers recently approved a proposal to operate the Sapukaskanda oil refinery as a state-owned business entity disjoined from the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation. The government had said it has identified the need to make a critical investment to upgrade the oil refinery in order to keep it up and running for another 25 years. Thereby, it has been decided that Sapukaskanda oil refinery be operated as a separate public enterprise 
and to call expressions of interest to select a suitable strategic investment partner to upgrade the infrastructure facilities to address the existing operational challenges. The Power and Energy Minister had said that the government is also exploring the option of relocating the Sabgas Kandal refinery to Trincomalee in future with the upgraded modern facilities and the development of the tank farm. The facility, which is the only oil refinery in Sri Lanka, was established in 1969 and fulfills approximately 25% of the country's demand for petroleum products. Tourist arrivals exceeded 65,000 in the first 17 days of the month, bringing the year-to-date total to over 850,000 visitors, reinforcing the industry's rebound. Tourism Minister Harin Fernando told that the country have exceeded the 65,000 mark of arrivals for this month as of last Friday. He stated that it is encouraging to see boost in arrivals, which reflects a positive outlook for the industry, and this also has pushed our cumulative arrivals for 850,000. He also added that they are optimistic that the industry will maintain its growth momentum and achieve the set targets for the year with the implementation of additional initiatives. As per provisional data released by the Sri Lankan Tourism Development Authority, during the first 16 days of the month, it has welcomed a total of 61,735 visitors. The boost in arrivals were largely influenced by Indian tourists, closely followed by Maldivian and German travelers. The daily average of arrivals have dropped to 3,858 compared to over 6,747 levels in the peak season during the first quarter, reflecting the lean period. Minister of Water Supply Jeevan Thondaman has said that the World Bank will help Sri Lanka restructure the $800 million debt in its water sector. Thondaman said on social media platform X that the World Bank's help Sri Lanka will restructure its $800 million of debt in the water sector. have access to credit enhancement schemes that will make new water projects transparent and affordable and put us on a secure path to achieve SDG 6. The minister met with the global director for water for the World Bank Saro Ja in Bali at the 10th World Water Forum. Thondaman stated that since their first meeting in December, Saraj has come forward to provide the full support of the World Bank for the ambitious reforms we are doing in Sri Lanka's water sector and that he is looking forward to working with the World Bank Water and deepening their partnership. A short commercial break now. Let's take a look at how the stock market kicked off right after this. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Now despite concluding last week on a positive note, the Colombo stock market experienced a downturn today, commencing the week on a negative trajectory. Both indices closed in the red, mirroring the downward trend observed at the start of last week. For a detailed breakdown, let's go to Ranjan Ranathunga from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The Colombo boss took a dull turn today with both ASPI and S&P SL20 indices closing in the negative territory mostly because of the selling pressure that was coming from the retail side. Further, the retail sentiment was also uh, impacted by the negative sentiment surrounding the both local and global arena where the local uh, from the local side the market came down because of the adverse weather that is prevailing in the country as well as the Uh, the failure to meet 30 conditions that are to be met by to complete the IMF second tranche so these were the few things that brought down the market today on the back of this aspi came down by 85 points during today to close at 12235 while smp sl20 index came down by 22 points to close at 3615 the total turnover for the day stood at 1.1 billion down compared to the 2.6 billion of the monthly average that we have seen among the top contributors to the index uh, brew was uh, ceylon beverage holdings was there mainly due to the uh, the good results that was reported while on the negative side the uh, the commercial bank as well as uh, janashakti insurance saw added to the selling pressure in terms of janashakti uh, insurance the uh, the main reason for the selling pressure to be seen today was the uh, the coming up of the ex, ex dividend date uh, from the announcement that they made for a, a dividend announcement of 13.25 rupees on the other side among the top turnover generators for the day dip products was there 
mainly due to the positive results that grew the uh, quarterly profits for the March ended quarter. To get an in-depth understanding of how the stock market might perform throughout the week after starving on a negative trajectory, we turn to Dimanth Matthews from First Capital Holdings for the analysis. During the upcoming week, uh, we believe that the stock market is likely to be a bit uh, volatile. So on one side, uh, we see that the, uh, the week is a bit of a short week uh, with the upcoming uh, holiday season and then uh, next week you have the uh, expected uh, policy announcement. So the monetary policy announcement is likely to be on the 28th of uh, this month and there there will be an announcement whether the uh, policy rates are going to be maintained or not. So investors are uh, expecting uh, some sort of a uh, announcement there and uh, on based on that uh, there could be a bit of a uh, volatile situation at the moment. So uh, with that uh, volatility the turnover levels are likely to slightly uh, slow down and also even the retail uh, volumes are likely to be uh, on a bit of a downward trend. Uh, however, uh, the overall market is likely to be broadly stable because of the positive earnings that are likely to uh, come out. So if you look at the earnings that have already been released, uh, we have some strong earnings that have come out in the banking sector and we believe in the uh, other sectors such as uh, consumer, tourism are likely to post a very strong results that is likely to keep the overall market in check and buying interest continuously uh, coming into the market. Gold's price has been increasing for the past two weeks but saw significant gains mainly on Friday and early this morning. Another factor investors should note is that the demand is not solely coming from the US trading session but rather all three trading sessions. Gold rose to a record of $2,445 per ounce earlier this morning on track to wrap up a second straight day of gains. More importantly, the safe haven commodity broke its previous record high of $2,430 made on April 12th. Gold bugs have been among the biggest winners so far this year, with their favorite asset adding roughly 20% to its price since the start of January. Oil prices extended gains today amid political uncertainty in major producing countries after Iran's president died in a helicopter crash and Saudi Arabia's crown prince cancelled a trip to Japan, citing issues with the king's health. Brent gained 41 cents or 0.5% to $84.39 a barrel after rising to $84.43 earlier, its highest since 10th of May this year. U.S. West Texas Intermediate or WTI crude for June edged up 23 cents to $80.29 a barrel after hitting $80.35 earlier, the highest since the 1st of May. The June contract expires tomorrow and the more active July contract was at $79.89, up 31 cents or 0.4%. Brent ended the previous week up about 1%, its first weekly gain in three weeks, while WTI rose 2% on improved economic indicators from the US and China, the world's largest oil consumers. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated further against the US dollar today compared to last week, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has dropped from 295 rupees and 80 cents to 294 rupees and 92 cents, while the selling rate has dropped from 305 rupees and 15 cents to 304 rupees and 59 cents. The rupee has also appreciated largely against a basket of foreign currencies. Let's take a look at how the rupee excelled against the global currencies.
Moving on to a short commercial break now, this is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. SoftLogic Life recorded another quarter of robust financial performance in a challenging business environment, posting gross written premium of 7.2 billion rupees during the first three months ending 31st of March. The top line growth is an increase of 20% compared to 3% during the corresponding period of last year. Profit after tax for the period in review rose to 854 million rupees, an increase of 70% year on year, and profit before tax grew by 46% compared to the last year's stand at 1.2 billion rupees. Total assets of the company stood at 51.8 billion rupees, while total equity was reached by 12.8 billion rupees. Furthermore, financial investments of company stood at 43.5 billion rupees, which is 84% of the total assets of the company. During the period, the company recorded a return of equity of 23.5% while continuing to maintain a capital adequacy ratio of 367% as December 2023, which is well above the regulated requirement of 120%. India's energy major, Indian Oil, exported its first ever parcel of the superior 100 octane premium fuel. Tailored for the premium high end vehicles, XP100 is set to offer superior performance for its customers in Sri Lanka. This milestone of exporting XP100 to Sri Lanka symbolizes Indian Oil's ambition to become a global energy player, recognized not just for the scale of operations but also for the quality of products and contributions to a sustainable future. Flagging off the inaugural shipment, Mr. V. Satish Kumar, Marketing Director of Indian Oil, stated that this marks a momentous occasion as another one of their products moves out to conquer new markets in Sri Lanka. India's first 100-octane petrol, XP100, is domestically developed, leveraging Indian Oil's indigenous Octamax technology. Ceylon Bank PLC has announced the appointment of Justice Buanaka Aluvihare, who is set to assume the role of Chairman of the Board, effective from 29th of this month. The transition follows the retirement of the current Chairman, Ravi Dias, who will complete his nine-year tenure as a Director of the Bank on 28th of May, in accordance with the Banking Act Direction No. 11 of 2007. Justice Aluvihare was appointed as an independent non-executive director of Ceylon Bank PLC in February. Justice Aluvihare brings a wealth of experience and expertise in the legal and financial sectors to his new role, having held various distinguished positions throughout his career. Moving on to a commercial break now, this is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Asian stocks advanced Monday after U.S. stocks indices drifted near their records, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing above 40,000 for the first time. China's market extended last week's gains after the central bank announced new support for the property industry, including cutting required down payments for the housing loans. The Hang Seng in Hong Kong added 0.7% to 19,680, with its property index up 0.7% during the afternoon trading. The Shanghai Composite Index advanced 0.6% to 3,172.35. In Tokyo, the Nikkei 225 Index climbed 0.7% to 39,067.45, while Australia's S&P ASX 200 gained 0.6% to 7,864.30. The Cosby in Korea rose 0.5% to 2,737.23. Shares of Reddit rose nearly 15% following a partnership with artificial intelligence from OpenAI that is expected to boost advertising income for the social media platform. 
Shares of Reddit rose more than 14% in early trading on Friday. The surge comes a day after the site announced a partnership with artificial intelligence firm OpenAI. The pact aims to draw in more users for the social media platform with AI-enhanced experience and attract more advertising revenue. Reddit primarily generates revenue from advertising, but in a February filing, the company said it would explore new monetization channels, including offering creator tools and licensing its data to third parties. With a daily active user count of more than 80 million, Reddit is considered a smaller player in the social media market. The company went public on the New York Stock Exchange on March 21st. Its shares have climbed 66% from their IPO price of $34. The deal comes amidst a growing number of lawsuits against OpenAI, with firms alleging unauthorized use of their content for training large language models. In recent months, OpenAI has also secured content licensing deals with several publishers, including the Associated Press and the Financial Times. President Yoon suk yeol and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak have advocated for international regulations on artificial intelligence to ensure that technological advancements benefit everyone. In a joint op-ed published today, the two leaders highlighted the necessity of global AI governance to manage and reduce risks and many more factors to fully realize its potential to transform lives for the better. President Yoon suk and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak have called for a global standards on artificial intelligence to ensure technological progress works for all. In a joint op-ed on Monday, the two leaders emphasized the need for a global governance of AI to regulate and mitigate risks while encouraging innovation, safety and inclusivity so that the technology can reach its full potential to transform lives for the better. This comes a day before Yoon and Sunak co-host the AI's Horror Summit, a follow-up of the AI Safety Summit held in Bletchley Park last year, where 28 governments agreed to jointly limit the risks posed by AI. The Horror Summit is expected to set out a vision for multilateral governance of the technology to help tackle global challenges such as poverty and climate change. World leaders will hold a virtual summit on Tuesday evening's Horror Time, and a ministerial-level conference will take place offline on Wednesday. Well, that marks the end of our first bulletin for the week. Stick with us for the latest happenings of the business world. I'm Sina Mayadene. Have a good night.